Let's talk about terraforming Mars for the long term. One of the major risks with Mars is that we might terraform the red planet at enormous expense, only for it to revert to its previous lifeless state over the course of tens of thousands of years. It would seem sensible that if terraforming is going to be done and all that money invested, the job should be done properly and completely. The first topic to talk about here is moons. Earth's moon, because it's large, helps to stabilise our planet's obliquity, which is our planet's tilt, and gives us our seasons. Mars' obliquity is currently 25.2 degrees, which is very similar to Earth's at 23.4. However, it has varied from 0 degrees to 60 degrees in the past, and if this happened again, it could seriously damage the terraform Mars' ability to host life from Earth. Additionally, our moon, our moon gives us our tides and helps to ensure that ocean circulation distributes n nutrients between the continents and their shorelines. On a planet with no moon, the lack of tides would stop this process working adu adequately and might lead to the development of dead zones in the ocean where all the nutrients have been used up and all the life dies. Additionally, most animals and plants use the moon and the seasons it induces to time their lives. In its absence, they would not be able to time their breeding, migration, feeding or hibernation, and therefore may not survive. Therefore, if we want to terraform for the long term, we should consider giving Mars a large moon. Its two small moons that it has at the moment would not do the job. The red planet would need something considerably larger. Perhaps an asteroid or one of the outer solar system moons would do, do it. However, the amount of propellant needed to get it from its source location, probably in the outer solar system, to Mars, and then slow it down and put it into a circular orbit, would be enormous. And at this stage we can't even envisage doing that, but it might be possible in a thousand years' time. The next topic to talk about is plate tectonics. Earth's plate tectonic geological system means that nutrients and elements such as carbon are constantly recycled between the ocean and the land. The way this happens is that the nutrients are washed by rivers from the land into the ocean and then onto the ocean floor. Then that is subducted beneath the continents where it is melted in the mantle. The melted rock and seafloor sediments that are then erupted as lava and vapour by volcanoes on the edge of the continents. It's a very slow process, but it's worked to keep our planet habitable for nearly four billion years. Mars may have had a tectonic system called Degree 1 convection, in which one hemisphere, hemisphere is dominated by updwell, upwelling, while the other by downwelling. This is evidenced by Mars's Great Northern Depression, which may be a downwelling area, and the Tharsis Rise megavolcanic region, where it may be upwelling. However, there is no evidence of recent, recent volcanism and there may not have been for millions of years. If volcanism is absent on Mars, the northern basin would gradually accumulate nutrients washed from the uplands and it would gradually fill. The southern uplands would become nutrient deficient and the ocean might become too salty for life. On Earth, plate tectonic has meant that the salt concentration in the sea has remained stable at 6% over billions of years. If this rose on Mars due to a lack of salt recycling and a lack of plate tectonics, it could cause a major mass die-off, leaving only microorganisms in a hypersaline ocean. Unfortunately, Mars' crust is considerably thicker than Earth's, which means that there is no chance that we could initiate an Earth-like plate tectonic system. Instead, we would have to develop some kind of recycling system that took nutrients from the Northern Ocean and put them back and distributed them on the Southern Uplands. This might take the form of a giant Archimedes screw occupying a huge tunnel between the depths of the ocean and the Northern Mountain, the Southern Mountains. Alternatively, Resources would have to be moved by mechanical paddles, rather like the way that foreign bodies are removed from our airways by tiny hairs called cilia, which move grains out of our lungs. Another alternative 
is for drones to transport nutrients between the ocean and the highland. The next topic to talk about is the atmosphere. In the absence of a magnetic field, it's possible Mars did have one in the very distant past, but it certainly doesn't now, Mars would need a thick atmosphere with an ozone layer to protect the surface against cosmic and solar radiation. Small planets like Mars do have some difficulty in hanging on to atmospheres simply because their gravity is much lower. Mars, with only one third of the gravity of Earth's, will always have this problem. But having a thick atmosphere which extends further into space than Earth's with greater atmospheric pressure at the surface would reduce the chance that portions would be blown away quickly by the solar wind. Additionally, on Earth, volcanoes belch carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which stays there until carbon is removed by plants during photosynthesis. If no volcanoes were erupting carbon dioxide on Mars, the atmosphere's content of carbon dioxide would decline to nothing, and because plants need this for photosynthesis, they would all eventually die. We'd be left with a dead planet. Therefore, some artificial system would need to be developed to replenish the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere on a more permanent basis. So to summarise, Earth has a mass of cycles and systems that have kept our planet habitable for billions of years. If we want to terraform any planet, particularly Mars, because that's the one we're thinking about first, for the long term, we have to understand our own planet a great deal better. We, then we have to try and recreate our planet's structures, cycles, systems and feedbacks on another world. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.